How you doing, people? Welcome to the Rubin Report. I'm still Dave Rubin, and we have three-time returning guest Jacqueline Glenn. Hello, Jacqueline. Hey. And we have multiple time. I, I've lost track of the numbers. Do you God. have it? It's not even on. I, yeah, I have the numbers written down right here on my chart. I'm going to say around six. Six time repeat uh, guest. That's a good number. Whitney Mixter, and we got a lot of stories for you. There's a lot of stuff breaking right now, so we're just going to get right to it. So, of course, uh, the Ray Rice story is obviously the big story in the sports world and in domestic news right now. Uh, so, of course, Ray Rice from the Baltimore Ravens, he has now been released by the Ravens as of two days ago. Uh, he punched his fiance uh, in an elevator. So let's just watch the video quick. I know you guys have seen it, but we're gonna throw to that and then we'll break it down. Okay, I mean, I've now seen that thing probably 20 times, and it's awful each time. I mean, just her lifeless body when he drags her out of the elevator. Uh, her name is Janae Palmer. They actually got married. They are married right now. Uh, and she released a statement on Instagram explaining the situation. So let's take a look at that. She said, no one knows the pain that the media and unwanted opinions from the public has caused my family to make us relive a moment in our lives that we regret every day is a horrible thing, to take something away from the man I love that he has worked his ass off for all his life just to gain ratings is horrific. This is our life, what you don't all get. If your intentions were to hurt us, embarrass us, make us feel alone, take all happiness away, you've succeeded on so many levels. Okay, so we still got more that I want to get to, but let's just start with that part. So yes, the Ravens have suspended him. Now apparently the NFL did know of the tape for months. They apparently didn't see it until two days ago. That's what Roger Goodell, the NFL commissioner, is saying, and that's when they then decided to suspend him. Um, so without getting into all the minutia of the NFL and all that stuff, let's, we have two ladies on the panel. Let's just talk about that part of it. Um, I sort of, look, I sympathize with her, of course, that something awful happened to her, and it's up to them in their private lives if they want to get married and if they're in love and if he's truly, uh, if she's truly forgiven him and all that. What do you make of her, of her statement? I mean, she said several things, apologizing for, even for her part in it. Like, she takes responsibility for it, and I feel terrible for her, and the fact that she married him a month after this happened, is crazy to me. And I know that the NFL, you said they didn't see the tape until two days Th ago. That's apparently. what they're claiming. But do you really need to see someone getting knocked out to know that it's not an okay thing to do? I mean, because initially they only tried to suspend him for, what, two games? Right. Well, initially they saw the tape. This is what, uh, initially they claimed they saw the tape of her from the outside of, of right. the elevator. So they saw essentially her lifeless body just being dumped there and was like, oh, maybe she was drunk, maybe she fell. We don't know the goings on. And so they swept it under the rug. They thought they could get away with it. And right. I, I think that's- wait, wait, so just to clarify real quick. So they're saying that they didn't see the punch until two days yeah. ago. That's what they're saying. Yeah, okay. they're saying that they, they didn't see the actual goings on yeah. in there until two, two days ago. Yeah. Um, so that's why initially they suspended him for two games only. Now, the thing is here, like, there's a much bigger discussion that needs to be had, and, and it's unfortunate that she's coming back and, and feeling the need to apologize, first of all, but also feel the need to just personalize this. I mean, I, I understand this is very personal to her, and, and I understand that this issue is going on between the two of them, but the thing that she needs to understand here and that people need to understand is being that this is on such a large scale, scale of things like this is a discussion that needs to be had regarding domestic violence and you know if you're going to you know commit this act have it be in a public place and have it be videotaped and and you're in a public forum in general be expect your ass to be handed to you right so is that part of the craziness now of just the general 24-hour news cycle and all that that I, look, I'm not privy to their private relationship, so they may, may well be in love and trying to build a life together and all that. I could see you're, you're, you're not even on board that. Like, you think I mean, this is so... I, I find it hard to call something love that's abusive like that. Yeah. So, I mean, 
I understand that, that victims tend to sympathize with their abuser a lot of the times, and I think that's what we're seeing you know, happen right now. And like you said, it's part of a bigger discussion on domestic abuse that we need to have. And since it's not just their private life, he's a very public figure, it's a role model for everyone. Right. Yeah. So if you let someone this, you know, well known get away with it you're sending a message to everyone out there that this is okay to happen but you're yeah. also the thing is you're also sending a message here that just don't get caught almost because the thing is 21 out of 32 NFL teams have members on their team that have been convicted or committed domestic abuse or sexual abuse. There's three cases pending right now, you yeah. know, between the 49ers player, there's a couple other ones and it's just like okay this person just happened to get caught doing it. So, it, I mean, I, I don't know. I think at the same token of, of the NFL taking such drastic action and suspending him, the Baltimore Ravens still stood up, and one of their first statements that they said was about Janae yeah. apologizing and her, for her role in it. So it's like even though they suspended him, they're still taking her in as an accomplice to the situation, which yeah, I think it, is... Well, it seems very clear to me that unless there's a video that this, the league knows that these, there are tons of criminals, and it's not just the league, all sports, they know that there's all awful stuff going on, mm -hmm. there's people doing drugs and beating women, yeah. and all kinds of horrible, they could literally start another league just for the criminals. Exactly. That, 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 that be, might be. It was like a battle royale of football, you know? And I think, but I think the fact that we've suspended players, and I say we because I'm a chairman on the board <laughs> of the NFL, um, for, for smoking weed, for a year, and then you get a two-game suspension for doing God knows what in, a, in an elevator until you see what really unfolded, I think is completely asinine. But. Yeah, well, to that point, so Keith Olbermann, uh, who has a show on ESPN now, he is pissed at basically everybody involved in the situation from top to bottom, so let's take a look. Each body, each leading individual involved came to a judicial conclusion about what had happened to Janae Palmer and what should happen to Ray Rice, and each through deception or incompetence, misled the public, damaged the efforts of every man and every woman in this country seeking to merely slow down the murderous epidemic of domestic violence and made a mockery of the process by which those who batter those they claim to love are to be brought to justice. And not one of them, not Commissioner Goodell, not NFL Senior Vice President Adolfo Birch, not NFL Chief Counsel Jeff Pash, not Baltimore Team President Richard Cass, not Baltimore General Manager Ozzie Newsom, not Assistant Prosecutor Diane Ruberton of Atlantic County, New Jersey, not Prosecutor Jim McLean, not Superior Court Judge Michael Doino, not Ray Rice himself. No matter what actions were taken today against Rice, nor what might be taken in the future, none of them have any remaining credibility, and each must leave or be expelled from their current positions. Okay, Thank well. Yeah. <laughs> we told them that was yeah. like a roll call and you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, clearly the guy is not mincing any words there. I think he makes uh, some really good points. This sort of reminded me actually of the whole Penn State uh, sex abuse thing where it was systemic and everyone sort of knew and who do you fire and how, you know, do you blame the coach and the president and the vice president yeah. uh, and all that. Us for watching that in slow motion. Like the <laughs> thing is, why exactly do we need an ESPN like football slow-mo replay? Play of that like sock out. I just don't understand. Like I saw it. I don't need to see it like in slow motion like a hundred times. Like yeah. I get it. Well, it's really something. Up. It's sort of like the ISIS beheading things. It's like we yeah. watch them and like it's gross, but you sort of have to see right. it. I think and it's one of those things that a lot of people try to sweep under the rug and pretend mm -hmm. doesn't happen. But whenever you see it right there in front of your face, it's too hard to ignore. Right. Yeah. Um, do you agree with him? I mean, I know obviously we're, we're not NFL owners, <laughs> and, and regardless of your feelings on sports in general, but is this a type of thing where the NFL just has to clean house now? Like they really have to send a statement like you guys knew what was going on whether you saw the video two days ago or even if it comes out that they saw it a month ago just get rid of some of these people absolutely i think these people need to be you know taught that this is not okay you can't support it and like i said before you know they're public figures so what they do reflects on society and people look to them as an example so if you don't take care of it when it happens it's going to perpetuate itself yeah. Yeah. I, I mean it's it's such a large discussion because you can look into like well why aren't music executives fired for not you know tarnishing chris brown's contract or why aren't like politicians i mean there's so many different sectors of 
of business and politics and sports that we would all, it would all just shut down. Everybody's fired. Everyone's fired. Yeah. You're all fired. So I'm glad you brought that up because I do think that's a really interesting point because I was noticing how everybody, I get all my information from Twitter these days, everyone on Twitter was clamoring for him to be fired. Then he did get fired, okay, or let go, whatever you want to call it, and, and everybody was happy. But it was kind of making me think, look, if, if this was an accountant, now I get your point about the public figure part of this, but if you were an accountant mm -hmm. and you beat your wife and there was video of it, um, you would still be allowed to be an accountant once the uh, legal proceedings right. took, uh, you know, were, were resolved or whatever. Um, so is there something like, should we, should we be holding sports people to higher standards than regular citizens? No, I mean, I think it's just the public eye. If you're in the public eye, you're, and, and you know, fan dollars and, and people's money is going to your salaries and you don't have the personal power to hire them. Like, I wouldn't hire an accountant that I knew was an abuser, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I wouldn't want to go to a game where I, I like all the other players but this douchebag who's beating his wife. He's representing right. the team as yeah. a whole. You know, it's a larger picture and they might not want him to be representative of them. Yeah, so are you guys down with the idea that he'll uh, be banned for life. I mean, that's what some people are saying. Are, do, do you think it's like a privilege for I him mean, to I'm be able down, to play in the again, NFL? I mean, what's up with Homeboy, who like was in the dog fighting, and then now he's Michael back Vick. with a, Michael Vick, and now he's back with a vengeance, and people totally forgot it all. So who knows? He could be back. You know, it could be a passing thing. Yeah. All right. Well, this story is probably not going away, so we will see what happens. But uh, let's move on to ISIS. Uh, this thing also is not going away. Uh, as we tape this tonight, President Obama is going to be making a major speech on what we're gonna do about ISIS. People are saying it's gonna be this three-year protracted thing and maybe we're gonna have airstrikes in Syria now. Do we need authorization, blah, blah, blah. That's a whole other topic. So what I wanted to talk about uh, was that there is a bunch of brave people. Uh, this started in Lebanon and they are doing something called the Burn ISIS Flag Challenge. It even has a hashtag on Twitter. And let's take a look at some video. Okay, so as I said, this started in Lebanon, but it's, uh, it's spreading, uh, so to speak, across the Middle East. As you can see, some of the people do show their faces, some don't. Um, these people have some ball. Like, whether you're showing your face or not, knowing that everything can be tracked and traced and tagged and all that, uh, we gotta give these people some credit for having balls, right? Absolutely. It's, it's definitely risky, but <laughs> it's interesting to see some of them using blow torches. The, the blow torches. They're that's, not messing around. That seemed to be the reaction from you two <laughs> behind the camera here. It's really spreading like wildfire. Yeah, I, I half made the pun and then I kind of stopped. <laughs> Thank you for I picking that up. I just needed to follow through with it. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, but really, we do have to give these people, like these people live in a part of the world where there is so little freedom. We know what ISIS is doing. I mean, this was originally in reaction to them beheading a Lebanese soldier. Um, so we, we kind of should be backing these people that are trying to fight the power, right? Absolutely, and I think it was a group of students that initially did this. And there's yeah. a video, I think, on YouTube with over 100,000 views, and at the end of it, they challenge the whole world, ice bucket challenge style, to also burn flags. Yeah. So everyone out there watching, don't buy a flag though. Print it out. And <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> don't support them. But right, right, you can right. burn a printout copy. Do you guys think in a weird way that when people do these kinds of things that it somehow strengthens them? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's my concern in this is that you know, ISIS and and these Islamic extremists and whatnot are doing a, a, have a huge outreach campaign on social media to recruit new people. And, and my concern in this is that it's drawing even more social network attention where it's, it could potentially be the, those people that are on the fence of joining or not or looking more into the other side of things. Yeah. I, I, that's just my fear in this, that it's just bringing more media where that's actually been one of their largest outlets in recruiting new members. Yeah, so we've been talking about that because we've been doing this 
ISIS for weeks. We were doing ISIS before it was cool. We were doing it here, uh, really, back in May. I mean, we were talking about this. Um, but how much of that do you think is true? Like, should we be talking about this? Because is it all, you know, people, they were suspending Twitter accounts that were posting the beheading videos, and they don't want, you know, they're taking them off YouTube and all that because they think it's propaganda. To me, I think it, we kind of have to talk about it because we need to know what's going on, especially if we're about to enter a freaking war uh, that yeah. doesn't see, I don't want, but. Uh, That's good. But, but, how, yeah, but how much do we have to actually um, talk about it without strengthening them? I, I think it's impossible to have one without the other. Yeah. You know, so you kind of just have to weigh it and see what you think is more beneficial. In this case, like she said, most of their recruitment is coming from social media. So it is a scary idea. But how else are you going to get the word out there? How else are you going to try to make change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. it is a profound statement. And in, in, in reading about this, I actually stumbled across something else that I thought was really um, moving, which was the rubble challenge. Have you, have you heard about that? No, it's what's that? A, a small group of people in Gaza, um, instead of doing the ice bucket challenge, they actually oh, the took challenge. buckets yeah, of rubble yeah, yeah. where they, you know, obviously don't have access to water, or, and a lot of them don't have access to uh, electricity to make ice, so they actually right. took what, something that they do have access to a tremendous amount of, which is rubble. Yeah. And poured it over their heads so as that, a statement. So it, I mean, this this concept is catching on, and it does make people have discussions like we are right now. So I think you know, in that sense, it's good. Yeah. Although at some level, the more of these that we do, are we just watering down all of them? Uh, no pun intended. There was a bad <laughs> pun. Too. Really? Like, are are we really? I mean, you know, everyone's doing this now. We have we have secretaries of state that do hashtag yeah. things on Twitter. Like, how much actual? Uh, change is any of this affecting really beyond just kind of making yeah the information's good it gets us talking about it that kind of stuff do you think it really causes any change I do and I think honestly the more people talking about it the better I don't think that there's any watering down effect I think that you know the conversation is good to have and if people weren't talking about it before and they are now that's only positive right yeah yeah I agree all I right agree. Well, well then let's end on an agreement okay <laughs> All right, I'm seriously pissed about this story, and it's getting completely swept under the rug between all this ISIS stuff and then uh, the Ray Rice thing. So President Obama announced this week that he's going to push his decision on immigration to after the elections in November. Now, why would he do that? Now, okay, so just real quick, we know the Republicans suck. I say it every week. They suck. They're not helping. They're not trying to make compromise. They're not trying to do anything. Now, so he can't get legislation passed that he can sign to make immigration reform. At the same time, uh, he knows that it will be unpopular for him to do any executive action now. So he's announcing that he's going to wait to do something unpopular till after the election to help the Democrats. So this just reeks of everything that sucks about politics all around. Bad Republicans then using an executive action, which is sort of a, a betrayal of the separation of powers. It's a lot. It's a lot of shit, and it's just sort of what drives me nuts about politics in general. Uh, but let's look at the White House official statement on what the president's going to do. The reality the president has had to weigh is that we're in the midst of the political season, and because of the Republicans' extreme politicization of the issue, the president believes it would be harmful to the policy itself and to the long-term prospects for comprehensive immigration reform to announce administration action before the election. So you really need to think about what he's saying there. He, he's going to do something that's politically unpopular that his base wants him to do right now. So the progressives, all the people on the left want him to do immigration reform right now, but he doesn't have the balls to do it right now because he thinks it's going to hurt the Democrats. The Republicans aren't playing ball. It's just everything, as I've now said 10 times. It's everything sort of that sucks about politics wrapped up in one thing. Um, politics just sucks. How's that? How's that for a question? Does politics just suck? Politics sucks. I think that's all we need to say. Video's done. That's it? No, We're done? But, I mean, I'm not surprised, because this actually would hurt the Democrats in the midterm election. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, what politician makes political decision before elections? Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. But shouldn't a president, a two-term president in his sixth year, almost entering lame status, be a little more brave and say, I'm just going to fucking do it? Like, to me, it's the idea that he's even telling us. They're flat out telling us, like, we're playing politics in the worst possible way. But do you, let me ask you, do you really think, I mean, are, are, you, gen, are you generally upset, genuinely upset, or are you just playing devil's advocate here? Because are, he's just blatantly saying it how it is, whereas opposed to in the past, a lot of politicians have been like, 
having a lot of empty promises and I'm going to do and teetering around things. He's just flat out saying, I'm not going to do it because it's going to mess us up real bad. Right. I, I think. I mean, I have to give him some credit in, in that regard of things. Okay, so I'll give him that much credit. I'll give him that. Like, you're telling us how stupid the system is yeah. and you're being honest about that. So I'll give him that, I it's suppose. It's like a filibuster of, of, you know, not taking action in this larger spectrum. Right. I guess what I'm more annoyed about here is just that the... That it, he's six years in and they just never, and I know the Republicans suck, I say it every week, yeah. but like they just never figured out a way to make anything work. So instead he has to do an executive action. You know, we have separation yeah. of powers. So Congress is supposed to make laws and he's supposed to sign them. But what he's saying is, I'm just gonna wait till after the elections to do something you don't want me to do, because it's gonna hurt my guys, the Democrats, and then I'm gonna do something that I don't really have the authority to do. So I guess I'll give him a little credit well, for the honesty. Yeah. And, and also also, also, I do, my concern in this is that this is going to drive more Republicans to the polls yeah. to assure that they get the slots and it's going to end up backfiring and then he's just going to be stuck with So I totally buy that and I've already yeah. seen this in the right wing websites and blogs and everything. They're all like, you see what he's going to do? You see what he's going to do? So it energizes their base. Mm -hmm. So is he accidentally strengthening the other side? What's going on here? I mean, maybe. <laughs> the whole thing is, like you said, politics sucks. Republicans suck. Democrats suck. Everybody sucks. I mean, he, he is being honest, at least, and telling us why he's doing what he's doing. Kind of, though, because he said that he would have this done before the end of summer. Right, oh, that's the other thing. He isn't breaking his own promise. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll do it soon. And now he's saying he'll do it after the elections. If he even does it then, maybe he'll keep kicking the can down the road. And that's why people are mad, because he keeps just procrastinating and delaying things, you know? Human civil rights can wait. <laughs> I mean, we've been I mean, on immigration reform policies to change for, for since immigration since we started coming over the borders from on the Mayflower. Yeah. Since that has happened, we've been waiting for immigration reform. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I don't know. The thing is, we've literally every politician has used this as a platform or a, a, a speaking point throughout their term, and it still hasn't happened. But we're just focusing on him because he's like, yeah, I'm not doing it right now. So just hold up. You know, mm -hmm. he said it just like that. Right. So in I, my mind. Yeah. Isn't it just sad though that a, a president six years into it still has to be playing politics? I guess that fundamentally There's is what. There's a lot of sad things about a lot of presidents that we've had. So. <laughs> so not, yeah, not it's just kind of. Yeah. Um, all right. Final thought on this. Um, solve immigration for me. W what do you guys think? Because I think this is also what nobody ever talks about on the news. Is what do actual regular people like? If what do you basically think about immigration? What should we be doing? Like basically. Basically, in 30 seconds, give me a. Yeah. Yeah, what I mean, it's, it's tough be because there are a lot of people who are doing it legally, you know. So you don't want to make them feel like, you know, what's the point? Everybody's just, you know, sneaking in anyways. And there are a lot of criminal issues that come into play with this. But you have to remember that we are a nation of immigrants. So everybody who's high and mighty, who thinks that, oh, they need to go back to their own country, where do you think you came from? Yeah, we're Not a melting pot. <laughs> that's what they told me in yeah, third grade. Exactly. Yeah. What I do you think? I think we basically? should we should nourish safer avenues for people that have been here contributing to. To society um, for them to become legal citizens and you know and, and then we should strengthen borders and, and make the, there there be a more streamlined process of having legal channels I mean it's really about making it an, a, a safer space for people who have been here uh, you know to actually like move forward with establishing citizenship here it's like making it a safer place for them to come out and say it because it's so taboo and people who have been here for 20 years still are are you know tiptoeing around around applying for health care applying for different things it's like these people are, are just as American as you or I. Yeah, I mean, literally, they're separating families that yeah, have been exactly. here for 20 yeah. years, and they then deport a kid who gets yeah. pulled over for a, a stop sign. Yeah, I basically, I agree with uh, both of my esteemed guests on this one. Perfect. Yeah, let's secure the borders. Let's just get that secure, if we can possibly do that, and then figure out a way for all the people that are already here to announce it, and let's get them in, and then we'll deal with everybody else. And I know that's kind of pie in the sky stuff, but I have a feeling maybe we can do it with an executive action or some other half-cocked measure. Our great ally, Egypt, I'm very conflicted about Egypt. I think they're kind of trying to do some good stuff. They've had, you know, between the uh, coups that maybe did happen or didn't happen and, uh, you know, what's going on with the new president there. They're, they're sort of trying to be a good country and then they kind of go backwards a little bit. Uh, they just arrested seven people after their first gay wedding. Uh, let's take a look at some video. <laughs>
I mean, that's the sound of joy, people. Is that the sound of joy? Created. It's a lot of tongue. That, that would be a good lesbian. That's a great lesbian. That's like the call of the lesbian. <laughs> I'm going to work on perfecting Can you do that? that? I don't. Make that sound. That's like a Mexican thing it's as a well. Me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, God. Right. Well, let's just assume that was a good sound. I think it was a good sound. There, we don't, we never get those images out of the Arab world. Something progressive happening and joy and gay rights. So there's a lot of good there. But of course, then these seven people get arrested. Uh, the public prosecutor's office released a statement saying uh, that the act was humiliating, re regrettable, and would anger God. Uh, Jacqueline, I know you're going to have a field day with this <laughs> God fella. <laughs> um, they remained in custody for up to four days, and it's a little bit unclear what's going to happen to them now. By the way, Egypt, and they're not the only country uh, in the Arab world that has this, they have medical tests, medical tests uh, for gay people where they try to figure out if you're gay, and I don't even want to get into how they uh, do that, but we've talked about it before. Um, to me, this is the type of story that everybody in our media should be talking about all the time. Because, you know, when, when Russia had the thing in the Sochi Olympics, um, everyone was going crazy. And yet, for some reason, when something good starts happening in the Middle East, we don't talk about it. And we should be talking about this, shouldn't we? Absolutely. And, and bringing to light what they're doing, but also showing that there are r little rays of light coming out of that place. Yeah, I mean, you saw the video. They seemed so happy. There was nothing wrong going on in that video, but they were still charged with what? Publishing indecent images? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's not about the video that they put up. It's about the actual act of that course. they're... Right. That they're doing. I mean, well, I think it's also about the video because they're representing them as a country and their people, and I think that that's where, you know, those people can't genuinely be tied to our, our nation and whatnot. I mean, this is a blatant example of human rights violation in so many regards. Like, I actually did look up the, what the medical testing... Yeah, feel free. You know, it, and, and it's like making these people get on their hands and knees, pantsless, and massaging, st stimulating essentially, and penetrating their anal cavities. And like, that sounds like a good Friday night. <laughs> that sounds pretty gay to me. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that yeah. sounds really fucking gay. But yeah. like I'm just saying, like, that it's literally in so many aspects of things. If that were to happen anywhere else, I feel like we would be talking about it. And I think it's because it's the M Middle East area right now. I think there's other, other situations that are trumping it and they don't wanna, I don't know. Yeah, so what do, you, what do you make of that, how we pick and choose these things? So we're all outraged, and remember we were boycotting vodka, even though it turned out that Stoli Vodka was made in like Latvia yeah. or something, but we were boycotting the wrong vodka company because we were so upset about what they were doing to the gays. Egypt, they're doing this. Uh, homosexuality is illegal in every, literally in every Arab country. I think there's 10 that you can be put to death in, in Africa. Yeah. Um, so why don't we get upset about this? I think people live in a little bubble that we call America, and we don't really look at what's going on in other places. And as much as we should, people just don't think it applies to me. I live here, you know, they're all, they're so far from me, it doesn't apply. Yeah. You know, for some reason people just care less, and that's sad. But I think things like this are great because we can get discussions going and hopefully bring more attention to it. Yeah. Um, why do you think there's an obvious connection to where they treat gay people well as pretty much all the places that civilized people would want to live? What's the connection between being okay with gays and then pretty much everything else being sort of okay? There, there seems to be a through line there. I mean, I think it's a more just a more libertarian mindset, a more openness and and. and you know, free speech, free action is allowed, and people enjoy freedom. So, you know, if if you can live your lives and 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 be free and be happy, it's just the place I would want to flock to that area, as opposed to flocking to you know, Egypt or the Middle East, where I have to wear like a full cover. I don't know. I mean, this isn't the first time this has happened either, where it's actually been. There's been a larger scale arrest in 2001. There was 52 yeah. arrested on uh, some luxury boat of a, a gay club in Egypt as yeah. well. And it's just like yeah, Iran put two gay people to death last year. I mean, this yeah, is happening. I mean, this, the fact that this is still happening is something that needs to be brought up as as a worldwide discussion. Like I think that I think that those countries that do have the liberties of being who you are and being out and being gay and living your life, I think should this should be a, an area that should be interjected on. Yeah. I mean, that's my opinion. Maybe that's because I'm part of this community. I feel so <laughs> invested into it. But then again, I feel as though if oh, it was lesbians... Oh, it's your lesbians, skewed opinion it's just my, It is my skewed gay. opinion. It is. But I feel like if there were lesbians and they were doing this, it, it would there wouldn't even be a video because they'd be like, women exist? Yeah. No, they don't. <laughs> what do you mean? 
in. <laughs> Made me totally shocked. Yeah. Um, so we just did a segment on immigration. Do you think we should treat gay people in other countries, in countries where it is criminalized, um, as refugees? If these people wanted to have refugee status, should we uh, grant them that? I mean, personally, I would say yes, just because I'm worried about everybody. I feel like, you know what, I feel so bad for what they have to go through, and it's not right. And I would love to help them, but I, I find it hard to believe that we would do that as a country when we still haven't legalized gay marriage everywhere here. Yeah, oh, I mean, we're not going to do yeah. it, but I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. kidding. Yeah. society. Yeah. There will just be like a big Priscilla Queen of the Desert bus <laughs> coming through from all different countries, just full of like, you know, worldwide queens. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Sounds like a documentary I want to make. Speaking of a documentary I want to make, uh, they're giving weed away to poor people in Berkeley, California. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we've got a little more info for you. Marijuana dispensaries will be required to give 2% of their pot to people earning less than $32,000 per year. The measure is destined to provide pain relief to the needy who cannot afford prices that reach $400 for an ounce of legalized weed. The regulation was passed last month by the city council. It takes effect Next summer, I want to give a shout out uh, to our director, Mike, who got very excited when we uh, showed that right there. Um, okay, look, we do a lot of weed stuff here. I smoke weed, I have no problem with weed, like the weed. You know, once, I did it once. And I didn't I, inhale. I, I did not inhale. I'm high right now. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. One um, marijuana. Oh, yeah, just once? Just one marijuana. Just once for you, one yes. marijuana for you. <laughs> and I would imagine since you got rid of your dreads. Now oh, you, I'm clean. You're totally slate. clean. Clean slate, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so there's just something kind of funny about this story, I guess, in general, like that the government would be giving weed to poor people. So let's just get the funny stuff out and then we can go. Like, is there something funny about this? There's something funny, right? Like, we're gonna give weed to poor people? Like, I mean, it's medical marijuana, so it's, well, yeah, Technically, it's, it's supposed to be I mean, serving a purpose yeah. medically, right? I right. mean, you know, so you're trying to help people out. But the, the only the only issue I kind of had with this was forcing businesses to give away 2% of, you know, their product, which you wouldn't normally do. But I heard from a bird through the grapevine that sometimes when you go to these places, they give you free joints anyway. Yeah, so it might not totally be so bad. Might. Yeah. <laughs> they totally might do that. Okay, yeah. They totally might. Do you never know. Like so getting away from the funny part of like just... I don't know, I just have this vision of like there would be homeless people that we'd just be getting them stoned all day. That just seems funny to me but, somehow. Okay, but. think about it this way. I mean, we, there's state aid um, given to these, to poor people yeah. who can go in and get prescriptions filled that yeah. are things that are way more serious. You know, Narcons like, you know, Oxys or Adderall or, you know, things that really can affect people. Yeah. And affect the people's really function. good stuff, not the just really the really good stuff. Yeah. Like, we just like, eh, but yeah. if I'm like nodding out, that's yeah. what a good day. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like this is, and these are medically, these are regulated things that large companies make a tremendous amount of money on still you know with these people coming in with their state aid insurance and I feel like this in a sense is amazing because it's taking big business out of it and I, I think that's that's making huge strides in the whole industry in general Not yeah to mention that narcotics is one of the number one killers of acc like accidental deaths in America you know mm -hmm. so for people to be worried about Marijuana that yeah, hasn't I've killed been, anyone ever. Right. I mean, it's not you know, like I've smoked like a giant blunt, and, like face planted. And I, I've never like died from that, obviously, because I'm sitting right here. <laughs> if I ever smoked weed, that, that was deep, Whitney. You obviously <laughs> do smoke a lot of weed. I'm like definitely high right now. Right. I mean, every time we do a weed story, we talk about that. That. Uh, <laughs> that Right, people don't die of weed. It's just they don't. They don't even get into yeah. car accidents because of weed. They sit there and they eat and they yeah. laugh and that's it. That's the bigger concern. I'd be more concerned on people wasting their food stamps much faster <laughs> because it's about to get serious. So what about the people that would argue it's gonna kill their motivation? Because there is probably some truth to that. You could smoke weed and you sit there and watch cartoons instead of going to get a job and doing what you should do to be a productive member of society. Yeah, I was watching a debate on Fox News about this and that's exactly what the pastor was saying. What are we oh, gonna, yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna make all these people out there who don't have a job even more lazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if they weren't doing things before, they're probably not going to do less things now because people, they're high, yeah, you know? Who are maybe, homeless. <laughs> maybe they'll start thinking outside of the box. A lot know? of people who yeah. are homeless or poor, they're, they're in these situations because of, you know, medical problems that they have or other problems in their life. It's not just because they're lazy, and that's a big misunderstanding that right. a lot of people have. They stigmatize, you know, people who are lower income, and they call them lazy when that's not the case. Right, exactly. I 100% agree. On a serious level of this, yeah. and medical marijuana actually, 
actually does have positive effects on things like cancer and arthritis, like r very Little real. Things, Parkinson's, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I mean, so it, it's like these could act this could actually be a beneficial alternative treatment that is actually saving taxpayers money and helping people at the same time. So yeah. I'm all for it. Um, all right, so we're we're pretty much all we're, agreed here. We are. We're, we're all agreed on the weed. Um, agreed on the weed. Do you think years from now that the people that are against legalizing weed, forget this, the, the poor person angle here, but the people that are still fighting it now, are they gonna be looked back on and just thought of as totally ridiculous? I mean, yeah, we're probably gonna look back on them in the same way we look back on the people who were all for the prohibition. Yeah. You know, I mean, freedom. 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 Man. Yeah, I just wanna be free, man. Free love. Be free. <laughs> free love, there you go. All right, let's talk about the U.S. Air Force. I thought this one was kind of interesting. The U.S. Air Force has told a sergeant that he's gonna actually have to leave the military unless he agrees to take an oath with the phrase, so help me God. Yeah, I'm not making that up. No other branch of the military forces uh, their members to do this, but the U.S. military, uh, but the Air Force does. Um, he's refusing to do that, and now he's poised to take the military to court. Um, Jacqueline, obviously, I have to start with you on this one. Uh, what? Chepra, separation I, of church and state? Uh, uh, you know, there's that thing that we call separation of church. And people don't even realize what that is, I don't think. I mean, how could you really sit there and expect somebody to have to even put their hand on a Bible when they're going under oath to your version of, of God? You know, what if they want to put their hand on a Bible for, you know, Thor or some other ridiculous made up? Or the God. Quran. Or, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, I pledge allegiance to the flag, you know. One nation under Thor. How about that? Let's do that. Right. So should we, I always say we should have to swear on the Constitution. That would make a little more sense. Those are just the laws, little, right, you know. that we're supposed to live under, but instead it's just this imaginary book. And I don't even mean that to uh, denigrate religious people, but it has nothing to do with our laws. So w what, is, what is about the U.S. Air Force? That, that's the one I thought was interesting here, that it's not the other branches of the military. It's just the Air Force that's the only one that I don't people. understand why it is specifically the Air Force. I mean, like, what is it about them that they, are they the most... They're closest uh, to God. And they, is that what it is? That's yes. what I was thinking. Exactly. They're, 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 they're focused. He's up there. The and they're flying around up there. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. like, we better maintain this. Like, no, I don't understand it all. And I can't believe this is still still in place. And you're saying, why can't people understand there's a separation between church uh, and state? Because there isn't actually a separation <laughs> between church and state in every in our courtrooms, in, you know, in our Pledge of Allegiance, yeah, in our classrooms, it's like, it's everywhere. Yeah, and by the way, for people that might think that things are going in the right direction in terms of church and state, um, actually in the past, you were allowed to use alternative phrases instead of, so help me God, but they changed their policy in October 2013. Yeah, less than a year ago, they made this thing more religious. So that's sort of the, uh, the order that we're going here. Progress. Um, do you think it's, it really though, is it a violation of the Constitution? I mean, if this guy's gonna sue, Absolutely. and I, I think he's gonna win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he should win, it is a violation. It's blatantly not okay to do that. Yeah, like, I mean, there's somebody here willing to risk their lives for our country, and he's actually being forced to go against something he believes in, to, you know, he's giving an, been given an ultimatum. I think he absolutely has a case and he should absolutely win. Yeah, all right, well, we've got a little bit more on atheists because a third of Americans want God taken out of the Pledge of Allegiance. I thought this was really uh, interesting. Uh, actually, the phrase under God was only added to the Pledge of Allegiance in 1954, so it wasn't always there, contrary to popular belief. Um, and there was a study on this, and let's take a look at the findings. Uh, the American Humanist Association surveyed 1,000 Americans after being told those words were added to the original version. 34% said under God should be removed, 66% said it should stay, and of the 1,000 respondents, 666, uh-oh, the devil, six, six, the six, devil, six. the devil, uh, identified themselves as Christian, 123 as followers of other faiths, and 211 were unaffiliated. Um, so to your point a second ago about we don't even have a uh, separation of church and state, or I, that, that's what you were saying actually. Um, do, does this, as an atheist, when you see the Pledge of Allegiance and they add this in, does this bother you? Does yes. the phrase bother you? Yeah. It bothers me because it's, you know, this is not one nation under God. This is one nation with a variety of different people, with a variety of different beliefs or lack of beliefs, so why would we want something in there that's exclusionary? And I liked, I liked, you know, the American Human Humanist Association saying that there were a third of people that wanted it out. That made me feel kind of better, but at the same time, I thought it was kind of bullshit. 
Like, I mean, I, I'm used to being in such like a, a Christian society and stuff, and I, I kind of looked into their numbers a little bit. I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. No way is there really a third of people out there who want this to be like that. And they, Wait, they said uh, something let me ask like... You just real quick, are you, are you saying that because you think that number is low? Like you were surprised? Oh, no, I thought that was high. You, yeah. Really, because I'm, sh I'm like shocked that I'm like just, I'm saddened by the fact that it's so low. I couldn't believe it was as high as it was. Yeah. I thought that was absolutely, like, I, I was like, did they fudge the numbers to make it look more favorable towards, you know, secularism? Mm -hmm. And they said that, what, 666 were Christians of the thousand, so that's, what, roughly like two-thirds? Yeah. But that's not right, because 83% of the population in America is Christian. So their numbers are skewed a little bit. So you, Right, so their internal polling data, you're saying, yeah, is skewed. Yeah, it's not representative. Right. Unfortunately, it's just not. Yeah. But, I mean, I think you can be Christian and still want the word God taken out. Yeah, well, I guess you could be anything and I mean, want anything, like, right? You know, I think it's not about that. I think you can be Christian and just still be, you know, open-minded to the fact that th this is essentially Ideally. becoming <laughs> a, a statement of yeah. faith instead of, of a pledge to our allegiance of nation, you know? And, and that's not what it's supposed to be about. And, and it, you get into freedom of speech issues, in my opinion, you know, when you're you're making children. I'm, I'm sorry, I know people say that kids aren't required to say the Pledge of Allegiance, but maybe things have changed in the couple of years that I've been a child. <laughs> But I, I mean, I was forced to say the Pledge of Allegiance every morning with my hand over my heart. Like, it was like, that was what you were doing. Right, and even if you didn't, if you were the one kid that didn't, well, then you'd be bullied all day for not mm -hmm. doing suspended. it, right? Or, or, or suspended or something yeah. like that. But really, it's amazing to me that we don't have the debate more about why don't we say one nation under the Constitution? Yeah. That is the the book, the that is out. the document, or, or so you just want it out altogether. I mean, the whole thing wasn't there before, like, we, 1954, yeah. so why do we need to just add that in? Just take the whole segment out. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Done. Yeah. Is it, kind of, does it have something to do with kind of like if you throw God in there, then it's kind of like you can make people believe anything? Like, one nation under God, eh, whatever, it means whatever you want it to mean. So yeah. it's sort of how, like, if they were to put Constitution in there, then our politicians would actually have to follow the Constitution. Right. But they don't have to, they have to follow God. I think there's using God in their mind, the way that they legitimize it, is that they use God as, like, this big balloon term and God being the nation that we live in, like the omnipotent presence that we are part of. But at the same time, it's, like, not comfortable for some people to say that, you know? I mean, like, imagine if all those Christians had to say, like, one nation under all law or whatever, and some people would be uncomfortable. Well, imagine yeah. those people being put in that situation. It's the same thing. It should just be an indescript term. They all have a majority rules mentality. I know. And with 80%, 83% being Christian, it's kind of difficult to get around that sometimes. And I think there was actually a similar study done before this, and the result was like, what, 8% people said they, uh, they wanted to have it taken out? Right. So they jumped from 8% to 34%. So you and think they, something good's happening here, actually? Is that I don't, sort of? But you're you're I'm shocked, saying, but... The, okay, so the point of this was to show that with education, people's minds would open to mm -hmm. wanting to take it out. So the, the poll originally that got 8% as a result, they didn't educate people and tell them that it's been changed since 1954. So what the American Humanist Association did was they said, hey, this didn't always used to be there. This was something that was added in. It wasn't always there. And with this new information, the point they were trying to make is that people were more open to saying, okay, well then maybe we should take it out because it does seem weird that it's in there because I guess it wasn't there all along. It's right. almost as if if you educate people, they become smarter. <laughs> what? That's crazy. crazy. Well, I hope we've educated you guys a little bit and more importantly than any of this, don't forget the seventh commandment which was sent to us directly by God, which is subscribe to the channel. The button is right down there below Jacqueline, and Whitney, their Twitterers are right down below, so check them out. And thanks for watching, and we'll do it again next week. Bye-bye.